All right, thanks for joining us, everybody. It's time for Turning Two with Booney. I'm Rich Rare, executive producer of the Brett Boone Podcast. So every once in a while, I take over, move into the big chair. We got a special, special edition of Turning Two with Booney. In fact, we got two Boons joining us. Uh, Brett calls him, well, we re- we affectionately call him Uncle Aaron on the podcast. Uh, I won't say what they call him in Boston. Brett calls him Artie. The rest of the world calls him the skipper of the New York Yankees. Brett little brother Aaron joins us here on the Boone Podcast. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well. Good to be on with you guys. All right. Brett, say hi to your brother. Hi, Arnie. Hey, Hello. We, we, we chat. We chat. We're in contact. You know, yeah. I, I I leave him alone when you know when the when the winds are are uh, not coming at the rate he wants. But uh, all in all, yeah, we stay in contact throughout the year. So, Arn, welcome to the program. I'm excited to be on the program here. Uh, a little off day in in the in in New York. Well, okay. So let let me ask you this, Aaron. When when your brother calls you and you guys talk quite a bit, and he says, you know, Arnie, I'm going to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a podcast. What, <laughs> what what went through your mind? You know, again, you're a professional broadcaster all that time at ESPN. When your big brother says, hey, I want to get into this broadcasting thing and I'm going to do a podcast, what did you think? I thought um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I didn't necessarily see it initially um, because just my experience in broadcasting and doing it for a long time, one of the hardest things to do is for us athletes or ex-athletes to interview. Like I, I, it was the hardest thing I, I had to do at ESPN was having to interview people. And um, it's a, it's definitely a skill you've got to develop. And uh, so I was unsure how he'd be at it. And I'm I'm proud to say, I think he's great at it. I'm, I, and I'm surprised I come across people all the time. Hey, I did your brother's podcast. Man, he's really good. I'm like, I know I, it's, it's a tough skill to develop, you know, cause we, I always, I always joke like, you know, I'll be watching ESPN or MLB network and you get the, you get the baseball player on there and they, they're interviewing another player. And basically their questions are a lot of times, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that are good at it, but a lot of times it's, they tell you everything they know, or they think you're going to say in their question. And then they, and the guy's like, yeah, I agree with you. You know, it's like, so it's hard to listen uh, and just ask and, and, and let the athlete or the person you're interviewing tell you. So Brett, when you would watch Aaron on ESPN, what was going through your mind when he first started? I'll tell you, it's different. And Aaron Price sees this when he watches me because we're brothers. So we're going to be not that we're critical, but we've, we grew up together. We know each other as good as you can know each other. So when, when Aaron would say something, I'll start laughing, smiling. <laughs> like they have no clue that he's just snowing them right now. Aaron knows the same thing with me. If, and, and I think about, I think at time to time, people that are close to me when they're watching, you know, to the general public that, you know, I'll get the feedback. I really enjoy your podcast. It's great the way you set up the questions. I laugh. I, Hey, I say, thank you. It, this has been a lot of work, Rich. I mean, I've, I've been on a, I've learned a lot in this process, but in the back of my mind, certain interviews where, where I know Aaron's interested in that guest uh, and he might, he might tune in a little bit close friends of mine that know me very well. Uh, my parents to, to a degree, but they're still parents. So they love you no matter what you do. I do think is Aaron watching or Maddie? Cause they're going to know I'm full of, you know what, right now with this <laughs> and Aaron sitting there go, come on, Brett, that's a bunch of BS. You don't believe what you're saying right there. So I do have that uh, seep into my mind a little bit, but, but it goes away. Cause I know, Hey, I'm fooling the rest of the rest of the, <laughs> the people listening. So when, when people say they've come on the podcast, and they listen, Aaron, what do they tell you? They basically, uh, it, you know, I always come across people and it's like, Hey, I, I was on your brother's podcast. Uh, it was really, really good. He's, he's, he's really good at this. I said, I know who would have thought, who would have thought, you know, that he's, um, yeah, it's been fun to listen to a lot of them. Um, and then a lot of people say are offended that they haven't been on the podcast yet. In fact, I, I came across someone the other day that was like, I'll leave, I'll, I'll give you guys the name off air that, said how come i haven't been on the podcast so you get a lot of that going on now so you're in high demand which is good sean mcdonald was talking about it last weekend 
That's the person he's talking about. I'll bet. Oh, yeah. oh, we already got a fact that Sean's like, how come I haven't been on the podcast? All right. Yeah. Yesterday, I was I was driving up to Maddie's house. Maddie, for those of you listening to the Boom Pod, Maddie's our little brother. Matthew. And I went, uh, I was going up there to, you know, for a Father's Day gathering. I was listening uh, to Joe Castaglione on, the, on your broadcast. And uh, I started texting with him, and I heard Sean in the background. Sean and I, we don't know each other that well, but we've done some events together. And sure enough, he came right on air, and he goes, and by the way, I haven't been invited, and I'm, you know, this and that. So I said, tell Sean he's invited now. Now, I hope I hope he doesn't take it as a slight, like, oh, just because Brett heard me. Now he's inviting me. I would have invited Sean a long time ago. I had no way to get a hold of him. I don't have his number. Well, yeah. well now we know. Um, something came up with the podcast the other day, Aaron. Uh, we were talking to your mom and dad. They came on with turning to with Booney, and they were talking about um, their son Aaron, who um, gets on television a lot. And my wife wa- likes watching the video, the John Boy videos, where they mm-hmm. lip read when you get run. And and yeah. I was telling I was telling uh, Brett the other day, you know, there's fantasy football for umpire or fantasy baseball for umpires uh-huh. on you know who's going to get the most ejections of the year. And I think you're right near the leaderboard. You and David Bell are going toe to toe. In the in the fantasy leagues of umpires, yeah. Well, uh, umpires. No. You mean managers? No, the umpires. They get you know you. Oh, you, you umpires, umpires fantasy to, league to oh, run that's... somebody. Oh, and and, uh, and Aaron and David Bell are right up on top of the list. Phil Nevin's <laughs> clipping on our heels too. He is. Too. I saw I saw Phil the other day. I, I'm not getting kicked out for a while. I haven't been kicked out for a while. I had I had one rough week. Uh, uh, other than that, I've only getting been kicked out once. Three in like a six, seven day stretch. Your mom told us though that, and, and Brett's told us this as well. You you stand up for your players. You're passionate for your players, and that's something you probably picked up from your dad. Um, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, yeah, I I do. There's there's certain things that, um, you know, I really are am passionate and fight for. You know, we are we have always preached and and are on our players about controlling the strike zone um and so it, it's something that i because i know as a player like not being as good as some of the guys that i've gotten to manage like there were times i was up there and i didn't have the nerve to take one in that big spot in a couple inches off the play i was going to go touch it and hit some weak grounder or whatever and, you know, it takes a lot of nerve to be able to sit up there and take a three, two pitch an inch and a half off the plate. And if you do it and you do it well, you know, I'm going to fight for that. And uh, so, you know, sometimes it gets a little escalated. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's, I, I, I got to ask you a bunch of stuff because we talk about you on the podcast quite a bit, Uncle Aaron. So look, first of all, let me just ask you this. Tell me about being Brett's little brother. So that's split up into now I'm 50, he's 54. So, you know, it's, it's, it's broken up in segments of our life. So, you know, growing up in Philly and Jersey, um, you know, so when we were grade school kids, it was, it was great. You know, he was obviously he's four years older than me, but he kind of let me tag along with him. And, and I, I think I give a lot of credit to me developing at whatever to be the athlete that I was a lot because I got to tag along with my older brother and, you know, I had to, I had to figure it out to keep up, you know? So whether we were uh, playing wiffle ball, basketball, football, I was playing with older kids and I had to figure it out to be able to hang because they weren't really going that easy on me. So, um, and I think that served me well, athletically speaking, as I moved through high school and into college and, and on into pro baseball. So um, he was great in that regard. Took me everywhere with him. Well, most places with him. I'm sure there are certain things he'd leave me behind. Um, uh, but he drugged me along a lot when I was a little kid. Then when we were in high school and, and college, you know, we went to different high schools four years apart. So we just just missed each other like at SC or in, or in high school. And just – cool older brother. And then when I got into pro ball, um, coming up through the red system and then getting to, you know, basically when I became a starter at the major league level, Brett was the second baseman and established. So I got to, I got to play in the same infield with him for, you know, the final probably 50 games of, of 1998. 
and that was that was awesome and to have a big brother there that was established um you know i, I think it i think it helped my uh i guess big league development and and feeling like made it a little easier for me to stick just because i knew guys on the team better because of him i had a place to stay i had a mentor and a brother and an older player that kind of could take me under his wing a little bit so um he's been he's been he's I've, I've been lucky uh he's been a great older brother all these years i always say now he's he's hey he's turned out too he's turned out to be all right you know uh, <laughs> we, we, we went through some 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 forests to get there but he's turned out all right and now he's he's almost like the most mature boon well now how much credit does brett should you take how much credit should the little man take how much should should Stoltz take? Because he's the one who he's the one I understand would say, "Come on, Aaron's going to come with us." Or Brett would go, "I don't want to bring." And Stoltz would go, "No, come on, Aaron's coming with us." Shut up, Brett. I'll tell you, Aaron. Kidding aside, Aaron was a fun little brother because he had a lot of intangibles. He was very entertaining, uh, and yeah, I, I always had a soft spot for Aaron and always wanted to bring my brother along. But like any brotherly. Uh, relationships there were certain times when i was a kid like we're not bringing the little the little kid with us come on and there was a, a friend of ours it's a mutual friend still to this day uh it's the mark stoltz the little man you referred to uh him and his brother eric were we're we grew up our whole lives together right down the street and mark the elder he's he was older than me he wasn't really a guy i hung out with when we were doing neighborhood things, we were going to play dunk ball. We were playing wiffle ball, like Aaron mentioned. We we're, you know, we're at any game. I'd be like, no, I'm not bringing Aaron. He can't hang with the guys that are going to be there today. And, and the little man, Mark, was always Aaron's biggest cheerleader. Like, no, he's coming. He's coming. And Mark was kind of the, the strong man of the group. You know, he kind of ran the show. Like, if, if anything happens, you don't want to get in trouble with Mark because he was just bigger and stronger than us. So Mark was his biggest advocate when – when those few times where I'm like, come on, Aaron's not coming to this one. He can't hang. I know who's coming to this, this football game and Aaron's not going to be able to run And Mark would be like, no, Aaron's coming. If, if, if he can't play, he'll announce the game, which, which Aaron did a lot. Uh, so I look back at our childhood and I have just fond memories. I mean, I, I told mom and dad, we we're having Aaron on the, on the program this week and I needed some pictures from our childhood. And I, and my mom, of course, mom's going to send like 50,000 pictures to me. And I just see little uh, pictures of Aaron as a little kid. And it brings back memories because he was that guy. I mean, he was, I was just the, you know, kind of, I wouldn't, I will never say I was a normal kid, but I was a kid that basically liked running around chasing girls and playing every sport possible where Aaron had a little more to him. He was, he before the Phillies game started, he had to have his field set up and it was going to be there. And if you weren't going to play, you had to sit in the other room. He was going to announce the game. Uh, he just had a, a little more to him than, than the rest of us little kids that basically, like I said, like chasing girls and, and, and playing sports, Aaron had that, that component, the entertainment component that, that, uh, everybody enjoyed, especially, you know, my buddies, I got to see it on a daily basis. I lived with him. But uh, he he was a, he was a lot of fun as a little brother growing up with. Yeah, and, and the, I have to ask the little you. man. The little man did always whenever it got too. He, he was he was a little bit of a protector too because they would they would beat up on me a little bit. But if it got too far, Mark would step in, and, and he he wasn't the little man back then. He was bigger than everyone back then. He's just the he, little did, he just now. right. He just never grew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I have to hear about the announcing because. Um, Sue told us the whole story that there was the two couches with dug out that she said, by the time you got done watching the game, you were just sitting there dripping with sweat. You'd, you'd pitch, you'd, you'd sing the national anthem. You'd announce, uh, Brett's told us when the games got too, uh, too physical for, for you. And they say, okay, you know, Aaron, come over here on the side, you'd stand there and you announce the games. I, I got to hear that story from, from your perspective, Aaron. Well, you know, <clears throat> We we're actually we're, we're, we're I think we we're in Seattle a couple of weeks ago and you know we're out there for batting practice and uh, you know the music's playing over the loudspeaker we're taking BP and and the music that comes on is the music from this week in baseball 
And I'm even going around to coaches of mine, players. I'm like, you know what that song is, right? Da, 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 and and they're, no, what's that? I'm like, jeez, it's this week in baseball, man. So every, I mean, every Saturday, like the game of the week was was huge, you know, like baseball bunch, game of the week. So I was, uh, yeah, I turned our living room into a diamond and I just played all the players and watched the games and would announce them. And, you know, like I think one of the reasons when I got done playing that I got into broadcasting and ESPN was, you know, I'm one of those guys that's very, I'm very nostalgic. Um, but I love listening to like, uh, I love listening to baseball on the radio. So a lot of times when I'm coming home from a day game, you know, uh, or even a night game for that matter, on my way home, like on my satellite radio, I'll tune into whatever game's on, still going on, and love listening to it on the radio. And I think that goes back to like, I remember falling asleep when the Phillies were on the road, or if I wasn't at a game at home, and, you know, Harry Callis and Richie Ashburn and Chris Wheeler, like, you know, it's like a little bit of a soundtrack of my child. Well, so is this week in baseball and Mel Allen and all that. And yeah, I used to just, you know, every Saturday for sure, uh, you know, after my games or whatever, I was I was posted up in the living room watching this week in baseball, playing, announcing, doing it all. Talk to us about your childhood and running around Philadelphia and Anaheim later. Brett stole stories about uh, you guys chasing the Philly fanatic around and harassing him and uh, running around like you own the ballpark in Philadelphia and then when Brett became a bat boy and he was overthrowing Reggie Jackson in the outfield, uh, warming him up. What do you remember most about growing up around the ballpark around your dad? Yeah. Um, that, really, I can't, I can't imagine a better childhood. I mean, you know, dad got to the big leagues at the end of 72. I was born in the spring of 73 and basically he was done my senior year in high school. So it's all I knew till I was 17, 18 years old. Um, and for a, great portion of that brett and i were at the yard with with our dad you know and in philly we were able to do so much and and we were able to um you know we had a locker in veteran stadium that we shared and we went every day and we're in uni and we had the run of the place i mean we shagged you know some games you know we'd watch behind home plate with the grounds crew and the philly fanatic would be in and out of there all the time um, so it was just such and, and, and watching a lot of great teams, uh, and great players. It was just so much fun, even though, you know, my dad, let's see, he played <clears throat> till 81. So I was eight, but those memories. So I remember the, those days when I was five, six, seven, eight years old, very well. And I think it was be, just because we, we were around it all the time and allowed to be around it all the time. And, uh, and then going out to Anaheim, you know, eventually we moved out there, obviously, um, you know, more, more outstanding players and great teams to be around. And we're able to, to do a lot. And, and it's something that I'm very grateful to, to our dad for like, and now looking back on it, pretty awesome that he took us as much as he did and i think part of it is we knew how to act we knew how to be around the the big leagues we knew how to be around the clubhouse we knew how to disappear when the time was right you didn't have to tell us like we knew and that was a product of being around those environments all the time so Suze told us about the Phillies uniform that you got for Father's Son's Day that you would wear out there she said she still has your uniforms uh, brett if we told if you told aaron about Dusty Baker, what he said about Darren and how he watched oh, you guys and that inspired yeah. him. Yeah, I have it. It was a pretty cool story, Arn. Uh, we had Dusty on recently and, and Dusty was a guy that, you know, and, and I think Aaron will probably agree with me on this. He's a guy we played against. Uh, he played against our father as a player. We played against him as players. He's usually in the other dugout managing, but, um, He's a guy that makes you feel like you know him. So I, I was I was excited to have him on on the show. We sat with him this actually the the winter meetings this past winter yeah. meeting, and we had a great conversation. And he he kind of confirmed uh, that reputation that Dusty has out out in the baseball world of just an unbelievable guy. And he didn't disappoint. He came on and and I was telling stories because 
like you, I, our childhood's unbelievable. It, it's something I think as kids we couldn't appreciate at the time. But some of my fondest memories, and I know yours, were from our childhood and and those great Phillies teams and those those Angels teams. But I was talking to Dusty, and I don't know how it came up. We were talking about his postseason run, I think, in – I think it was uh, 02? Is that right, Rich? Yeah. And they lost and, You know, when the, the famous – when J.T. Snow comes across and rescues Dusty's kid. And Dusty, Dusty stopped me when I was talking to him about that series. And he said, Booney, you know what? He goes – do you know why my kid was there? And I said, no idea. I, he said, when I was a young man and I was playing for the Dodgers, every time we'd come to Philadelphia, we'd see you and your brother running around and I would sit out in the dugout and watch you guys and see how much fun you were having. And he said, and I always made a promise to myself when I have a kid, if it's possible, I want to give him your experience that I was witnessing. He goes, so that play at home plate, he said, I get tribute that to you and the Boon boys because when I was playing, I thought one day I'm going to do it. He goes, and that's the reason it came. It kind of blew me away a little wow. bit. You know, Dusty being our elder and kind of dad's age, you don't think that he said, but those those memories of coming to Philly and watching you guys in your unis running around, he goes, I always thought I wanted, I want my kids to, to grow up like the Boone kids did. And, and I thought it was a pretty cool story because nobody – you know, you, you think about us running around in Philly. We never think we're, we're inspiring anybody. We're just out there being a pain in the ass. I think Aaron <laughs> makes. I think Aaron makes a good point. When we knew how to act, somehow Dad taught us without actually words on how to behave. So, so if we, if they just lost a big game, something's happened. They weren't on a good run. They were, you know, they were one, one and one and eight in their last nine appearance uh, games. We knew to kind of be out of sight, out of mind. Now, that wasn't going to let Dad off the hook. I was still going to tell him we're going to the ballpark, Pops, and I don't care if we've got to, we've got to stay in the tunnel at the end. We're, we're putting our spikes on so we hear the clicks as we walk. Yeah, the clicks. Man. And we're going to go. We're, we're going. And, and sometimes I'd win that argument. Sometimes I wouldn't. But it was a look. It was a, a body language from Dad where you knew, hey, Now's not the time. We got to get our get our crap and get out of here. We might go to the lounge. We might go hang out behind home plate. But we knew what to do, and and I think that that bought us a lot of rope on on being able to hang out the. No doubt, it definitely and, bought us little, a lot of rope. Yeah, and not even just the obvious ones, but just those subtle things that come up. I think in the course of a major league day, in the course of a major league season, like when you've got that savvy and moxie to be able to like have that feel to get the heck out of the way that does earn you more rope. I'll Did tell you this, this rich, and this is a funny thing. Aaron, like I said, he, Aaron's younger than me. So I was kind of the elder statesman. I got, you know, I got the bat boy in spring training, but my dad was pretty, he, he was a rule follower as like Aaron, Aaron's a rule follower. There, there are a lot of like it that way. I was kind of that one on the edge. Like I'll follow the rules to, to a degree. And I'm going to push the envelope. So I'm getting to an age where I think, hey, I can bat boy during the regular season. Well, my dad was, that was not what you did. Once that game started and he had to go to work, it was time for Brett to leave. And I'd push that envelope because, and I used to get so pissed and so jealous of a young Pete Rose Jr. when he got traded to the Phillies because he had carte blanche. We had a great childhood. But Petey was like one of the one of the players. I mean, he had like the players' uniform. He had two roads, two home. Me and Aaron had to wear our uh, our home unis on the road. Sometimes we're thinking, Bob Boone, you tight ass, whip out for a road uni. <laughs> so, I want the powder blue zip down. Let's go. Right, we want. The, and Petey Jr. acted like he was a player. I mean, he'd get them delivered with his name on them. That it came from the same company. Me and Aaron are getting knockoffs. Mom's sewing our numbers on at home. A little bit different, but that's how Bob Boone was. And I mean, and and those attributes that he possess makes him who he is. I mean, he's an unbelievable man. But I I just remember, you know, pushing the envelope, and and I just knew that look. I'd push it right up to, and that look Dad would give me that meant Brett, you're out of rope. You better leave or you're going to lose some privilege. And I knew right then I'd grab Aaron. I said, let's get the hell out of here before dad gets really bad. We want, <laughs> we want to come to the ballpark tomorrow. <laughs> Aaron, did you appreciate, did you understand 
what you were experiencing. I mean, you're with Hall of Famers, you're with Lefty, you're with Bull, you're with Schmitty, all these guys that you're around, and you know they're 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 just your dad's friends. Yeah, um, I would say impossible to say I totally appreciated it because you, when you're just it, it's your life and you're living. Um, I knew I loved it. <laughs> I knew I, you know, I knew I was like my life and a happy kid and love being around the game and being around great players and friends and everything. So, uh, but I think, but I think you do gain a, a deeper appreciation, uh, you know, once your childhood o- is over and you look back on it and you have a little more perspective on the world and, and wisdom and you realize just how fortunate you were to be uh, in a, in a pretty special environment with, with great parents. Was your clubhouse like that during spring? Do you like having when the, when the players bring their kids around? Oh, I love it. Um, And I mean, that's one of the things though, about today's game that, you know, they don't get the run like we did, you know, you don't have, there's just more layers of, you know, rules and, and different things that you're not allowed to do. And, um, but yes, I love, there's nothing better than, than seeing, you know, especially after a victory, like seeing some of the, whether it's toddlers coming in or whether it's some of even that have some older kids that you get to see, um, you know, one of my favorite Luis, uh, Rojas, our third base coach, his son, Louie, I think he's 11. They come early and hit every day and, uh, they'll be in the cages and, and little Louie is just awesome personality, very charismatic kid. And it's always fun to just pass him in the halls or, you know, Carlos Mendoza, when their kids are here, his kids are here, they'll be down hitting early and to have them pass by my office and say hello and just kind of, it, it brings you back a little bit. And, and I do love seeing and, and, you know, getting to know our families and the kids a little bit as well. There's one Boone Brothers question that we've kind of alluded to on the podcast, but we never went into great detail. So, Aaron, I want you to tell us about Boone Brother boxing. Oh, actually, I was just thinking about that a minute ago when 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 uh, Brett was describing Dad saying, "You better get out of here. You're going to lose some of that privilege. You better figure this out, or you're going to get in trouble." So, Brett and I used to box throughout the house. Literally, it would it would be on, you know, upstairs, downstairs. Like it would just keep on evolving and moving throughout the house. Well, I would wear the headgear and he would go no headgear and we, you know, we'd box. So (laughs) this one time I clipped him pretty good. Like, you know, to, to the point I ticked him off and, and and got him, got him upset and he kind of let, let me have it and just started laying it. I mean, beating me up good. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm hurting now. I'm hurting. I'm crying, and and he finally, he finally is like, "You better stop crying, or we're gonna get in trouble." So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sucking up the tears a little bit. You know, keep crying. Mom's gonna get in. Tr- we're gonna get in trouble. And and you know, as I as I'm sucking it up, and as I get through it, I'm thinking to myself, "We're gonna get in trouble." My ten year old brother just beat up his six year old brother. How about you're gonna get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a lot of fun. We used to play this soccer game in the house with, you know, with the open doors would be goals. And we had this little Nerf ball. We play soccer in the hallway and then box, you know, those little bootleg uh, uh, rims that you would hang in the doorway with the little Nerf balls. We played that all the time. I mean, we, it was, we played everything. It was a fun time. It, it, Rich, it was funny. Cause that box, it was true. I, I let, cause Aaron, didn't always want to buy it's kind of no fun when you're when you're it couldn't be that much fun being the younger guy all the time especially when you're at such a a a weird age you know where you're six you really can't hang with a 10 year old no matter who it is but i'd always like come on arn you gotta play because i was just bored i wanted to play and i'm like this is the only brother you know i got right now matthew was is 10 years apart he was just being born I'm like, I don't have anybody else to play with. Come on, put the and, and a lot of times Aaron would be like, I'm not boxing, I'm not boxing you right now. I said, Come on, we'll put the headgear on, you'll be okay. safe. So I'd kind of coax him because I, I was so bored. And and I was the one that come on, I'll I'll you know what I, I forget what I'd say to him, but I'm like, I'll I'll do this for you if you'll just box me now. <laughs> so I put the headgear and I would just kind of I was just 
looking for entertainment. So I'd stick, you know, I'd stick my face out like, hey, or take a shot, take it. And I'd pull it back right as he did. And he's right. The one time I just, you know, I'm kind of taunting him and he catches me with a hook. And it's like I I, I kind of got out of my body and I wasn't because I'd never want to hurt Aaron. And I, I heard him. I just went, whoa, yeah, wham. And then I figured out, oh, I'm not supposed to hit him that hard. And I'm still thinking he's got the headgear on. He'll be fine, right? He takes that headgear off. And, I mean, he's head, like, from his whole ear and down the side of his face is black and blue. I'm like, oh, no, we got to we gotta hide this from mom. Eventually, it came to light. And, and I don't know how much trouble I got in. But I, I, I didn't, I never hit him again like that. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, let me bring Matthew into this then. What's the difference between the three Boom Boone brothers? Who does Matthew take more after? Um, hmm. I would say I, I think he's a product of probably a little bit of both, but I would say he probably leans a little more like Brett. Brett, I agree with that. It's um what what is it? What's the dynamic with Matthew? Matthew, you know, Aaron had more time in the house with Matthew because because of, of the differ the, the differential in age. I'm ten years older than Matthew, so when I was you know when I was in college, Matthew Matthew's eight years old, so he's at home with Aaron. So Aaron had more, you know, in the family house with Matthew per se than I did. Um, but I think too because of because of the difference in age, and I was you know I was a college baseball. Uh, I was a high school baseball player first. So that's my little brother. And he's, he remembers coming to my games in college and professionally. So, you know, Matt, I was Maddie's older brother and, and Maddie was a little more, it was a six year difference with him and Aaron. So they were, had a little more of that relationship that Aaron and I had, um, you know, you'd have to ask Aaron how much it was, but it was tough for me. He was like my little, little brother, but he, he always looked up to me and I always looked after Matthew because, because I knew he was the little, little brother, um, to this day, but I, I'd say he's more like me, but, but I think a combination of the both of us, he's really kind of unique. He's really kind of unique in his own way, you know, but if yeah. I, if I were to lean one way, I'd say he, he's more like myself with a little air and mixed in, but, but Matthew's a unique guy. Yes. You know, Aaron, Aaron, did you ever box Matthew? You ever beat I don't him up? I remember box. So <clears throat> we used to wrestle a lot, and I used to drop that four, figure four leg lock on him. And I used to like do Greg the Hammer work. Valentine. Yes, like Greg the Hammer Valentine. So I would, and he, we, we'd be wrestling around, and then I, you know, get dramatic with it, like look at the crowd, like here, here it comes, and he knew that what that meant. He's like, <laughs> no, I wrap that figure four leg lock and lock it down. <laughs> That was, yeah, so. Hey, Richard, and, and Aaron would be announcing at, at the same time as he's bumbling, man. Yeah, I'm like Vince McMahon in the background. as I'm yeah, It's him great. Down. That is awesome. All right, one of the other stories that Brett's told a few times, but I want I want Aaron's version of it. Kirk Gibson's famous home run, Dodger Stadium. Oh, I was telling the story the other day. So I I've, I've finally started to tell people that we weren't there for the home run. You know, I... Um, so we had, let's see. So Brett's in college. Uh, I'm in high school. I think I'm a sophomore at the time. Yeah. I'm 15. He's 19. Um, and so our dad's on the angels and angel, like we hate the Dodgers. I mean, Dodger blue and all this crap you, you would hear in Southern California, you know, it's like you just over it, but they're in the world series. Brett's going to SC our friend, Dr. John, I'm sure set us up with some tickets. So Brett's like, hey, let's go to the game. Meet me up there. So I don't even know how I got up there because I, I couldn't drive. I was 15. So I don't know how I got up to SC, but I get up to SC and we literally hop on Brett's scooter. And we're driving the scooter from USC to Dodger Stadium, weaving in and out of traffic. One of the cars that were weaving in and out of traffic happens to be Mike Gillespie and Frank Sanchez. Oh, I forgot coach, about that part. Head coach and pitching coach. We're weaving in and out of traffic. I'm on the back of his scooter. <laughs> like, no helmets, nothing. Just, just two idiots going to the game. You know, it's kind of one of these, they see us. It's kind of like uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off when 
see someone like, oh, that's not right. And you just kind of wave and keep it moving. So, yeah, we went. We went to the game, parked. We were in the upper deck in right field because we were just in L.A. So I was telling the story to some people, and I'm showing them the seats we sat in. The last two possible seats you could be in the upper deck furthest over. That was us. And uh, all I remember about the thing is we left early. You know, we, I, I, I think I was back in Villa Park by the time Gert Gibson hit the home run. Uh, like that's how early I left. I don't even know how I got back there, but I did. But we, we rode to the game from SC to Dodger Stadium, weaving in and out of traffic on the scooter for the Kirk Gibson game that we didn't make the end to. Rich, that, that, that's good. That's a, see, I wanted him to tell that story because I, I try to tell the story. I don't have it perfect, but I forgot about my head coach. Mike Gillespie, who recently passed away, coached both me and Aaron at USC. We did pass him in the car, <laughs> and it would just added to my legacy at USC because I mean That's I right. used to do some, I used to do some things. You know, we've talked about weight room, and I didn't really follow the rules very well. But that's another thing. Like Mike Gillespie looking at me like, "What the hell are you doing? You're not supposed to be." You know, Aaron later plays for him, but yeah, yeah that, that I forgot about that. And Aaron, I think. Tommy Lasorda got us the tickets. As I, Dr. John's a good call, but I think Lasorda is the one. We somehow got a phone call to Tommy, and he was a, you know, playing against dad forever and just a family, kind of a family friend. Just said, All right, I got a couple, but, you know, I can't tell you how good they, they're going to be. Well, we found out good, how good they were, and they were. They were the worst in the house, but I think we were just going to say we were there. But we didn't mean to, we didn't know Gibson was going to do what he did late in that late in that game. And how about not saving the tickets? If you knew knew better, you'd save the ticket. That'd be a pretty cool ticket to have. Right. We saved. Well, that's that. That wasn't in my repertoire then to save the tickets and. Did you, you have know, the Did you have the, the, the bleach put blonde them in the tips? Did you have Maybe? the blonde tips back then, Brett? Oh, Brett. Did I? Uh yeah, I did. I I started them in high school. I I I brought them over to college. And I, and I quit the blonde tips after I, I started playing professional baseball, and I didn't bring them back until Seattle in the early 2000s. But, yes, high school and college, I had the uh, the blonde, the bleach blonde. Uh, Uncle Aaron, did you ever try that? Only when I was oh, – no, when I got to the big leagues, I did. With the blonde, with the blonde streak? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, see, it's a boom thing. I think so. No, oh, I think you... everybody back in that day and age, they, they tried yeah. it one time or another. Okay, yeah. so – you missed the big home run of Kirk Gibson, but Brett, you were there for Aaron's home run against the Red Sox. Aaron, what do you remember that night afterwards after you hit the big home run that uh, you'll forever be remembered for? But your brother was upstairs in the booth winning an Emmy. Yes. Busy winning an Emmy. Win winning an Emmy for laying out. <laughs> <laughs> We call that laying out in the business. Yes, laying out. That's a new word, Rich. Write that I down. Like it. Lay, laying out. Yeah. Um, what I remember is obviously it was a late night going back to the hotel. Um, and where we stayed, you know, because I came over at the trade deadline. So we, we stayed in the hotel. And the hotel we stayed in is where George Steinbrenner lived when he, when he was staying in New York. And uh, it was the one of the couple of interactions that I had with him um, for the final few months of the season. And Laura and I had gone back to the room real quick and we were going back out to meet where a lot of people were meeting somewhere in the city, like a celebration at some like, I don't know, sports bar or something. And we're going back downstairs and I'm walking out, w walking through the lobby and Mr. Steinbrenner's coming in and, and he, he said, I'm happy for you, son. Congratulations. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. So we go out and Brett meets us there. And I, I just remember walking into this. I mean, it's probably at this point one in the morning. Two, who knows? I mean, I, the game ended. It might have been two in the morning. And I mean, this place was packed to the gills. And you just walked in. It was like this roar. And, and we were kind of set up in the back. And it turned out to be a cool night. And Brett, Brett came and joined us. Uh, and celebrated uh, with some Yankees. So that was pretty, pretty neat. Brett? No, that's what I remember. I, I remember, uh, now I learned a new term, laying out in the booth, 
because it's well documented back in 2003 i wasn't really keen on being in the booth to begin with it didn't take it very serious looking back now uh i laugh at at, at how unprepared i was but i really wasn't there for any other reason than to ah, i'm gonna get to see aaron you know i'll get to party a little bit in new york and i'll get to see aaron play in the postseason uh, i remember when he hit the home run um uh, how excited I was for him because I knew how he was feeling at the time. And then all of a sudden he hits one of the biggest homers. Uh, I knew right when he hit it, I said, that's one of the biggest homers, not only in Yankee history, but baseball. And um, I remember being overwhelmed, how excited, how, how happy I was for him as a, as a player, not necessarily as a brother that too, but it was like, this is so cool. What he, what, how he was feeling 24 hours ago, how he was feeling 10 minutes ago with not even starting that night, going to pinch hit and that happening. I just remember this is awesome. And I went down and I visited him in the, in the Yankee clubhouse, which I would never do in a million years. I would never go into enemy territory. I couldn't stand the Yankees, uh, respected the hell out of them, but couldn't stand them. And, and not only, I, I wasn't going to go in and be in their party, but I had to do it because it was that big of a moment. And and I I, I kid about hating the Yankees. I, I, a lot of the players in that team, uh, what a great you, run you they wanted, had. You would have been and a I, Yankee if you could have. At the end, I, I was wishing, you know, one day when I'm when I'm on my last leg, I'd like to play in Yankee. I'd love just that city and playing in that old stadium. Anyway, I, I forced my way into their clubhouse to give Aaron a hug. And I have to admit, the player in me took over like I had to do this. I would never do it under any other circumstance, but I feel a little uncomfortable. And Giambi's a buddy of mine, and he's the first guy that grabbed me when I walked in and made me feel like it's okay to be in here. But I still felt weird. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I gave Aaron the hug. Just like he's talking about that post game. uh, Afterwards, they had a celebration for, you know, family, friends, Yankees only. It was a private place. They gave me the location so I could come down. But I got to admit, other than seeing Aaron and just telling him how proud I was as of him as a big brother, I felt a little uncomfortable being with all those Yankees. And Tino Martinez was there, who was a teammate of mine in Seattle. I shouldn't be uncomfortable. But under those circumstances, I was kind of the enemy. I was the kind of the bitter Seattle Mariner that we had a really good year that year didn't make it to the postseason. So it's hard to explain as a player what it's like, but uh, I, I, I well, do remember I, being a part of that. I was on, I, I experienced that a little bit in 99. So when Brett was with the Braves and they lost to the Yankees in the world series, um, that was a year in Cincinnati. We won 96 games and lost the one game play in with the Mets. <clears throat> so I was at the world series in New York watching Brett with the Braves play the Yankees. They get swept. They lose game four. I'm kind of I'm outside the stadium, like figuring out where I'm going and how I'm going to get home or whatever. And Brett says, just jump on the bus with us, the, the Braves team bus. And I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> it is, on- it's a weird thing. I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not getting on the Braves team bus. And Brett's like, it's fine. It's fine. Come on. I'm like, no, no. Finally, he gets me on the bus. I'm sitting there with him and. Don Baylor's right there. It's this silent bus. And I'm just like, I can't believe I, I like, it was like head buried in my face. Just like, I'm so embarrassed and awkward being on this bus right now, but whatever we, I got home, worked out. He, he needed a ride. He needed there a you ride. go. Um, Aaron over your shoulder is one of my favorite pictures. It's you in the, in the Marlins uni. Yeah. The Marlins uni. No, it's you. <laughs> Ray, Bob, yeah. Brett. Yeah. Uh, Brett talks about Ray Boone quite a bit. Yeah. I was going to ask you about Ray. Um, I do this all the time now, Brett. Um, that's, that's, that's Ray tapping the coffee cup when he oh, oh. coffee <laughs> refill. Um, we're, again, you know, I talk about having a great childhood. Um, we we had a great childhood and a big reason why was our grandparents you know we had my my grandma my mother's mom who who lived with us for a long time until she passed away um was very close with us betty and then patsy and ray were just a big part of our life and um you know ray would 
he, you know, he, he'd come up to basketball games, football games, baseball games, all while being a full-time scout. Um, you know, I remember, um, I remember him coming to visit me when I was in a ball and they were kind of following us around a little bit, the Carolina league. And I hit a home run in Durham. And I remember him being there, just how proud he was, but how cool I thought it was to hit a home run in front of my grandpa for the first time in pro ball. Um, he was just, he and Brett were close, obviously from the time they're, you know, Brett living out there as a baby. Well, when I was a baby, we were in, we were in Jersey and, and they were in California. So it was more, we'd go back and forth. And then eventually when we got to middle school and high school, uh, they were, you know, around us all the time up from San Diego, up to Orange County, but just awesome grandparents. And, you know, Ray was, you know, all about baseball. And, you know, we used to have a lot of awesome, awesome baseball conversations, um, you know, over a game of horse in the driveway, you know, playing basketball, um, but just always talking about his time playing versus my dad's time playing versus us coming up and playing in the different eras and who is better and all this. Um, I was fortunate to have, uh, you know, three grandparents that were very much a major part of my life for, um, you know, almost 30 years. Wow. That's amazing. All right, I got two housekeeping questions for Aaron. So my my nephew and niece that are the biggest Yankee fans in the world, Ryan and Alyssa, uh, said, you got to ask Uncle Aaron, what kind of watch are you wearing in the dugout? Oh, Oris. Okay. Yeah. They see the watch all the time and they go, well, there's a score. There's a clock in the stadium, but Uncle Aaron wears these cool watches. So they wanted to know what kind of watch. Yeah, so it's Oris Watch. So I have a really great relationship with Oris. Um, and they take care of me and my staff. And so I'm picking out new watches all the time. And usually I'll wear one depending on who the starting pitcher is and um, or, or special occasion ones. Um, but, yeah, it's Oris. They're great watches, uh, and I have a great relationship with them. Then the other thing they wanted to know, when's the last time you wore a jersey? Uh, I wore a jersey once this year, at least once or twice this year. Okay. Uh, so every now and then I'll wear it. And, and I, honestly, there's a handful of times that I'll put it on, tuck it down, I'm getting ready to go out there. And then I'm like, nah, I got to switch. <laughs> you know, it's like I just, you know, get more comfortable with my, my hoodie and my sleeves or whatever. But every now and then I'll, I'll mix it in. I, you know, I, I might mix it in this homestand. We've we've uh, we've lost a few games here. We're scuffling a little bit these last couple of weeks. Uh, I might mix it up and go uh, go jersey one one game this homestand. All right, so kids, if he's going to wear the jersey, you heard it here on the podcast first. All right, uh, to finish this off, let's play a little game: Boone versus Boone. I'm going to ask you guys a question, um, and you tell me: Is it Aaron or Brett? Okay, so uh, first one, we'll we'll do super superstitions. Who's more superstitious, Brett or Aaron? Aaron, who do you think it is? Uh, Brett. I don't. I, I, but I don't know. I'm not that superstitious, so I'll say Brett. Brett. I think we're even. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know Aaron to be superstitious. I wasn't. I had a few things. I, you know what, Rich? I don't know why. To this day, I still do it. I'll step over the line when I'm taking the field. Step over the line. That's normal. Right. Uh, the only thing I got into, and I've shared this before, is I wouldn't clean my jock if I got a hit or I drove in a run. He's more superstitious. <laughs> right. There you go. So I win. But I, I think we're pretty even. I, I didn't, I wouldn't change things up. You if know what? things were going good, day. if I was, if things were going good, I'm not going to mess with good, but I'm not going to go out of my way to do any, you know, I don't tap the railing three times and throw salt over my left shoulder. <laughs> Things are going good. I, you know, I keep the, I take the, I take the same bridge to get to the ballpark instead of going over the alternate bridge. I'm not messing with that, but, but I'm not going to go out of what my way to, to have some crazy ritual. All right. Um, who's more competitive, Brett or Aaron? Brett, we'll start with you. <sighs> I, I think we're pretty even there as well from when, from a player's perspective. 
You know, Aaron was no, just. No, no, no. I mean, in life, if the two of you are going to play poker, darts, golf, yeah, we're going to be more competitive. That's cutthroat, man. We're no, gonna... I think we're pretty even. Neither one of us wants to lose to the. And it could be a debate. It could be we're talking about the game, talking about something in the game. Uh, Aaron's pretty passionate. I mean, he's going to. St- we're a lot. And I say this quite a bit. We're, we're like minded in many ways. But we definitely have our differences when it comes to certain things. We'll 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 have a good debate, and we both want to win. So as players, equally, I mean, we talk about my coming up in the game and and getting to the big leagues following my father. It was never a big deal to me. I, I didn't worry about my dad. Just and then I take that to Aaron when he was in the minor leagues. He didn't worry about me. I mean, he was kind of like, screw Brett. I got to do this on my own. That's the reason, and, and that's the part of his makeup that made him a big league player because it didn't let that affect me. Uh, it did uh, let, let it let it affect him. That didn't affect me. As players, I think we're equally competitive. We both want to beat your butt, and we don't mat- You know, it doesn't matter to what degree we need to go. So we're both pretty darn competitive. Push, push. Okay. Yeah. Who's funnier? me brett i i i enjoy aaron's antics so i'll go with him as well <laughs> aaron i hang out with brett every day i agree you're funnier than brett yeah he's he is funnier than i am <laughs> um who who grinds harder who grinded harder as a player it's the big leagues rich that's a push that's a push <laughs> It's a grind, man. You, you, <laughs> we, you we have were, a big league career. You play over 10 years in the big leagues. It's the epitome of a grind. Of a grind. Mental, Rich. emotional, physical, like, you know. I'd say, Rich, we were we were very different as players, but how we went about the game, we were exactly the same. We'll grind. We'll do anything it takes to figure something out, to get a hit, to, to do something to win a game. Uh, we were – we were very similar in that in that capacity. Different styles, but exactly the same mindset. We're going to play. If we can be on the field, we're going to be on the field. Um, who's a better student? <laughs> that's Me. pretty. That's pretty easy. Yeah, that's <laughs> not that's not even close. Him, him, and dad. That's where they're very much alike. Who's better looking between the two of you? Um, <clears throat> classic <throat> looks. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give to Aaron. Aaron's got the more hand. Aaron kind of looks like my grandpa. And I always talk, I'm always, we're always asked about that in a kidding way, obviously. Who's the most, you know, who's the best looking at it? All of you guys. I always turn to some pictures of Gramps as a young Gramps. He was kind of like a movie star. (laughs) I was like a movie star too when I was young. (laughs) I'll I'll give it to Aaron. I'll give it to Aaron. Okay. I'm still grinding. They're still grind lock. Who's Thinking more like who? Who's Sue Boone? Who's Sue Boone's favorite? Me. I'll say Brett just to just to make mom upset. She's gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she wants to be equal. What? <laughs> Actually, I'd it's be, probably Maddie. Probably I'm Brett. even with all you guys. Brett. Um, who's more like Bob? Not even close, Aaron. I guess so. Me. Okay. Last thing, and I think this is kind of interesting with the two of you, Aaron. Tell tell me if if this is kind of the way it, it you you see it because I think Brett's mentioned this before. When you were coming up, Brett had already been established, and he's he said you know he used to give Maddie gloves, and I'm sure he you know pass on stuff to you once he signed a pro contract. So when you were coming up, you know. When you go to USC, you're kind of following those footsteps. You go to pro ball. I, I probably think that you're probably people go, oh, yeah, that's Brett's little brother uh, for a lot of your life. Mm-hmm. Now, all these years later, for the first time ever, Brett gets referred to as Aaron's brother. Talk to me about each other. What are you most proud about your brother? And, and we'll start with Aaron. Um, yeah, so I got that a lot. And so, you know, my first spring training with the Reds, my first big league spring training with the Reds was I was number 71 and we're different stature. I'm tall and thinner. He's shorter, stockier. Right. 
So I would get all the time like 71 Boone. Brett, I'm like, really? Like, come on. Like, and I would get that throughout my career. And I always say, you know what? And and a lot of times people catch themselves, hey Brett, da, 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 da. I'm like, I'm Aaron. And they were like, oh, I'm so I'm like, it's okay. I've been called worse. You know, it's it's okay. Um, you know, I've just been grateful for Brett. Um, again, going back to what we were talking about when we were kids, like he really was a great older brother, like dragging, dragging his little brother around. And then now, um, just seeing where he is in his life and all that he's been through, the career he's had, the some of the struggles that he's been through, and to the man he is now, and you know, kind of one of the glues of our entire family now. Like, um, I'm just proud of of who he's become. Uh, he's been through a lot. He he's been through a lot of great times. Um, it's obviously had a great career, but has had his struggles. And to see what he is now. I always t I tell people all the time when, when they, they haven't seen Brett in a while or people within the game that, you know, know us both or what, Hey, how's Brett doing? I always just, I'm always just like, you know what? He made it. He's, he's good. He's, he's, he's turned out the boom short boom is turned out. All right. <laughs> Brett, what are you most proud of your, of your uh, little brother? It's funny because yeah, our whole career and that comes a lot with just being the elder. Uh, you're always going to be, you know, your younger brother's always going to be your brother. So my, our whole, for, for the first half of our life, it was always, Aaron was always Brett's brother. And uh, he hit the home run and, and I joke about it. For the first time, somebody referred to me as Aaron's brother. And back then I'm going, I'm looking like, hey, you know who you're talking to right now? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was cool for that night. And, and I said, for one, for for tonight and for one night only, I will be Aaron Boone's brother because of the magnitude of the home run. These days, uh, it'll happen once in a while, and and it, because he's the skipper of the Yankees. And I'll tell you, being fifty four years old, uh, looking at my younger brother, what he's done, the career he's had, the man he is, most importantly, and the job he's done with the Yankees. Uh, I laugh. I give the guy a hard time that will call me Aaron's brother. Like, you know, you know who you're talking to, but I, I today it's, it's in a kidding way. Cause I'm very proud to be uh, Aaron's brother and, and, and the things he's done. And, and I, Rich, I, I, it's not only the kid that I, that I grew up with and, and the, the kid that was my teammate, the, the professional career he had, uh, the manager he's become, and, and he's in a he's he's in the Bronx, and he's on the hot seat every day, and and I kind of chuckle and I give him a hard time about it, you know. So you want to be a the Yankees manager? This is what comes with it, but he's done a great job. But more importantly, the man that he is, uh, the the father that he is, the brother that he is, and the the husband that he is. That's what I'm most proud of 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 Aaron Boone. Aaron, I got to tell you, this has been awesome. It's almost like you're the, the co-host of the podcast because we have so many great Boone stories between Bob and Sue and Maddie and you. Uh, it's been awesome having you join us. And by the way, I just wanted to thank you on the podcast as well. You extended um, uh, courtesy to me and my son and his roommate uh, to come visit you at Yankee Stadium. It was a thrill of Fleet Week, and uh, we wanted to make sure we told you thank you for that and appreciate you coming on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad I was able to get on, and it's good to see both of you, and good to see the podcast doing so well. Well, that's going to do it for today's podcast. Again, a special thanks to um, Aaron's brother, Brett, for joining us here on the podcast. <laughs> You're waiting for your cue? I'm going to get told <laughs> for that one. I know it. Uh, but thanks for joining us here. We will catch up with you next time here on the Boone Podcast. Awesome, guys.